As I'm sure you've no doubt realized by now, no programmer is perfect. We all make mistakes, sometimes simple, sometimes complex. The trick is how can we deal with these mistakes and sometimes avoid them if possible. We're going to cover all the different types of categories of errors that we're going to see in our programs. Now there are a lot of different types of errors and we can only cover so many, but we're going to do our best to cover all the main ones so you can so you have some idea on how to approach them in the future. So hopefully be able to solve them. But sometimes there's going to be some that are going to be over our head and we're just not going to be able to approach. And it may take some help from somebody else, um, some research on the internet, depends on what you're doing. So there are three main categories of errors. As we see here, there's syntax errors, also known as compiler errors. There's runtime errors, and there's logic errors. What we're going to focus on right now is the idea of a syntax error. So a syntax error is an error that prevents the program from successfully compiling into machine code and they usually occur as a result of bad syntax. So um, you type something wrong, you made a, you, made, you missed something, you missed a bracket, so many different little things that you're typing so fast you just made a common mistake. Sometimes they're simple, sometimes they're very tricky to find and sometimes they can cause other errors and make it look like there's actually more problems than there actually is. We're going to hopefully avoid as many of these as possible, but these are definitely the most common type of error, and they happen as a result of what you're doing. Unfortunately, this one's on nobody but yourself. So we're going to talk about a number of different types of syntax errors, common ones that we see all over the place. First one is forgetting a semicolon at the end of command. You put a command such as uh, system.out.println, you forget that semicolon, doesn't work. Spelling mistakes, possibly in a keyword, one of the words in the Java dictionary, a variable or a subprogram name. Remember that a case matters. So something like um, next line is not the same as next line with a lowercase l. Those are two completely different things. One works, one does not. When you're defining a string and giving it a value, if you forget a quotation, that could be that could cause a problem when you're doing concatenation you might if you forget a if you forget a quote in your concatenation again you could you could have another problem uh, incorrect or incomplete parameters when calling a subprogram so maybe you forget one of the parameters or maybe you put them in the wrong order um, or maybe you have too many if your parameters don't match exactly the program's not going to compile you have a syntax error trying to use a non-static variable or subprogram inside the main so if you created a variable, a global variable, that you plan on using inside the main, you have to make it static. Forgetting a return statement in a function. So you create a function, and the one main thing that a function does that a procedure doesn't do is return a value. So if you forget to return that value, you're going to have a syntax error. Another big one that's common is unreachable return statements. So say, for example, you have a function, and part of that function is an if statement. And you put your return statement inside that if statement. The problem is the compiler cannot guarantee that that code will ever actually be reached. So it considers that return statement as unreachable. It's better to define a variable and assign that variable inside the if statement and then later just return the, the, result, the current value of the variable. It's much more difficult to uh, enforce that that if statement will actually execute. Now if you have an else statement, we know as a rule that if or else one of them must execute which means if you have a return statement in either one of them or sorry both of them then your program will compile just fine because it's guaranteed to have at least one return statement so those are the common errors that we see now how do we deal with these things well luckily most IDEs have a tool to help us Eclipse included they have this thing called a debugger so when your program won't compile usually you're gonna get an error message that says um, do you want to run anyway your answer should be an unequivocal no. So I have a quick little Eclipse program here with a whole bunch of errors. Now if I go to run it, I'm going to click the little bug here. It's going to tell me errors exist in, re in the required projects. Tinker project, which is the name of my project. Do I want to proceed? The answer is cancel. I do not want to proceed. If I, tr if I proceed, what's going to happen is it is going to run the last time that the code was successfully compiled. Well, that's no good to me. It means it doesn't have any of the changes that I've made. So don't do that. So where, how do we solve our problem? Well, we go down to the bottom and we look under the problems tab. This is going to give us a list of all the possible errors we, we can have. So what we can see here is a lot of different information. 
So I've expanded it, so we see we have seven errors. And basically, what's going to happen is you're going to start attacking this one at a time, starting at the top. We always start at the top for a very, very specific purpose. The problem is, is that one error can cause other errors. So for example, if we declared a variable wrong, but then we use that variable all throughout the program, not only does the definition of that variable cause an error, but because that didn't successfully define the variable, every place I reference that variable name is also considered an error, even if the code is correct. So if we start at the first problem, which is the definition of the error, fixing that fixes all of those other subsequent problems. So with that in mind, we should always start at the first error. And we approach it by just double clicking the error, and it should take us directly to the line where the problem is. Now every error inside the problems tab has a whole bunch of information for us. First of all, it gives us a description of what may be the problem. And in this example it says phone number cannot be resolved to a variable. Basically that means it doesn't recognize the term phone number. Most importantly though, it actually tells us what line the error is on. So I can go through my code and we see I have our line numbers down here. But I can go through my code and it tells me what line I'm currently on. When well, that line is right there, line 8. If I mouse over the little X, it'll give me an idea of what the problem is, or all the problems on the line. You see this one has multiple multiple problems. So does this one. So does this one. And not that one, though. So we have a lot of different errors within our program. And the best tool we have is our debugger. Now, how do we actually solve this problem? Looking at this, we got to look at all the different possible syntax errors within here. So let's start at the first error. Number one, phone number cannot be resolved to a variable. So I'm going to double click on this. What is the problem with this? Well, I look at my code and I see that the variable was actually defined as phone number with an O. So I got to spell that right. I spell that right. As soon as I make the fix, I'm going to try run it again. I'm going to hit save, yes. But I don't want to run, but we can see that we're now down to six errors. Double click on the next one. Syntax error on token, close bracket, delete this token. What that's trying to tell me is that I have too many closed brackets. That can't be the problem. So we gotta look at this logically and say, okay, if it's telling me I have too many closed brackets, that means I have more closed brackets than open brackets. That must mean that I'm missing an open bracket. It could mean that, I'm, that I have a cl an extra closed bracket, but in this case, I can definitely see by counting the brackets, because it's such a small program, that I'm missing an open bracket. So the question is where? So I can actually select these brackets and it should line up. So here I've highlighted this one. It's telling me that this is the matching bracket. Well, that isn't right. So I mean, that's the matching bracket for that one. I see that, it, oh, I'm missing one for the if statement. So I put my opening bracket in there. Try and run our program again. Hit OK. Hit cancel. Now we're down to five errors. Syntax error on token greater than. Well, that doesn't make sense. It should be the symbol greater than. All right. Hit save again. Run it. Cancel. Oh, we just went down two errors by fixing that one. Excellent. Syntax error, insert semicolon to complete block centers. Oh, block statements. We're missing our semicolon. All right. Save it. Run it. Still don't have it working. The literal 416555 of type int is out of range. Now, this is a tricky one. But to click on this, this one is probably one you may not be able to get right away. The problem is, is that it thinks that this number is an integer, but that number is actually too big for an integer, even though I'm trying to store it in a double variable. So basically, because Java thinks it's an integer, it's saying it doesn't, it's not formatted correctly. So we have to somehow inform Java that this is actually a double, not an integer. So similar to, similarly to when we use floats, and we put that little f after our uh, 0.5 or whatever to tell Java that it's a float and not a double, we can do the same thing here. We can say, well, we don't want you to treat it as an integer. We want to treat you as a double. So I can put that little d right there, and that will tell Java, hey, treat this like a double. So now we hit save, and we run our program. We're down to one last error. The method println double is undefined for the type system. What am I missing there? Ah, I'm missing the out. System.out.println. Save it and run it. 
and our program actually runs now. Okay, so we fixed all of our syntax errors. So the syntax errors are definitely easy, the easiest ones to solve because it shows us exactly where the problem is. We just have to kind of work through the problem. So we're going to talk about the other types of uh, errors in the upcoming modules.